Your next comedian is one of the, uh, is the second of the uh, organizers of uh, McCormick's Leper Comedy, and a uh, very, very funny guy, a good friend of mine, and thank him for putting me up tonight. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, is he Lumby? Yes, he is. Jesse Jarvis! Oh my God, McCormick, thank you for sticking around tonight. You guys having a good time tonight? Yeah. 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 I uh, recently met this girl who, uh, she used to be a stripper, but she was also a cook at the strip club she worked at. And it's kind of, like the idea of getting, a, getting food and a lap dance, you know, at the same time. That sounds good if you're lonely, but think about it a little more. It's just like... Do you really want to get a lap dance from someone bringing you a BLT, but then all of a sudden you notice like all the bacon grease pops on her skin and stuff? Just like a little bit of a turn off. Ah, it didn't work. Kind of fucked it up. But I, uh, re I the other day, this happened just yesterday. I uh, I saw this like really big menacing tow truck, and it was like it was like it had spikes and shit on it, and it just said towing repossessions bounty hunter. I'm like, all right, I get it. You're a multitasking badass. That's fine. Awesome. Good job, dude. But like, I think you're kind of overcompensating, though, you know? You really want to kind of show off how tough you are. Like, have, have, like, puppies and rainbows on your truck or something, you know? Then you do something bad. All of a sudden, like, oh, sweet, the ice cream rainbow truck's coming. Awesome. And then somebody gets out, you're like, oh, shit, it's not the bounty hunter. Fuck. And you're like, how do you get so badass? Oh yeah, that's right, his daddy didn't high-five him enough as a kid, that's what it is. Alright. I'm, I'm extremely, extremely lazy. But uh, I still get all my yard work done. But that's because I have a really strong work ethic. <laughs> Caesar is really good at what he does. <laughs> I, um... God, I, uh, I, I lost my job recently. But um, I can't blame this recession though, because uh, I actually lost it during the last recession. <laughs> I was a choreographer for Insync. <laughs> yeah, it's like yeah, it's like I'm a, I'm not a good dancer or anything. It was a union gig, you know, and it's it's like all I did was I choreographed the top halves of their bodies, which. That sounds pointless, but like, you know, none of that fancy footwork can look cool at all without the, you know, the... <laughs> Just ask Usher. Uh, I, was at a, I, was at, I was at a music festival and there's this dance group on the stage and then the dance, like, the dance instructor comes on and starts giving this really sociopolitical speech and he's like, you know, I'm black so the economy's always been hard on me. And historically speaking, totally has a point. But I'm thinking the economy's been hard on him, not because he's black, but probably because of the fact that he's a male dance instructor. It's like, what parent's gonna give their money out to some guy in an outfit makes him look like he takes roller disco too seriously? You know? It's a bad parent. Uh, I, uh,. I think it's safe to say losing your virginity is never what it's cracked up to be, right? Is that safe to say? Right? And it never happens in that John Hughes 16 Candles kind of way where it's like, oh yeah, they fell in love and he came inside her and they lived happily ever after. Nope. But sometimes some cool music's involved, you know? Like maybe they use Usher to set the mood or something. Yeah, perfect for the, your dad's Range Rover. Or maybe just let the radio on and Smash Mouth or Chumbawamba's playing during your magical moment. Maybe that's where you're at. I actually lost it to an audiobook. It was... Yeah. It was Dennis Rodman reading Catcher in the Rye. We're into some freaky, kinky shit, man. Alright, uh, this, this usually doesn't work, but I really like talking about it. So I'm going to say this. I'm, I'm going to get out of your hair forever. Um, I, I really wish I understood racism. Like, I really wish I did. Because to me, racism just seems like some weird phase you should be able to outgrow with the right kind of parenting, you know? Like a kid who bites or poops the bed or something. 
So I got this idea, right, for all these old races still doing what, you know, doing their thing or whatever. Let's get, let's get like a mom for hire program, kind of like a big brothers, big sisters program for like old fucking racist people or something, you know. Mom like talked to the old racist guy and she's like, honey, you mean to tell me you're a member of the clan and you're assistant pastor of a church? You do know Jesus was a Jew, right? <laughs> No, that's not true, Mama. I saw Jesus in Nazareth. Jesus was British. <laughs> he had big British blue eyes and long British hair. <laughs> Don't ruin this for me, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> then, like, after they complete the program, <laughs> after they complete the program, they get a commemorative sweatshirt to show that they made the breakthrough. You know? It's just a plain white sweatshirt, though. And on it, it just says, the sweatshirt used to have a hood on it. <laughs> anyway, that's my time. I love you all, McCormick's. Woo! a lot of money! Please say it again. What? Say it again. <laughs> the mama thing. Don't ruin this for the mama. <laughs> <laughs> Well, right now we have your uh, first and I think only female comic uh, that signed up to go up this evening. And she, uh, she recently placed in the uh, Clash of the Comics of the Richmond Funny Bone. A uh, very funny lady, give it up for Miss Stephanie Brown! Hey. Hey. Hey everybody, how are you guys doing? Yeah. Awesome. I'm going to try some new stuff tonight. So, um, I work for the government, and, um, you guys know they're, alright, no? Okay, okay. Um, you guys know they're having the whole government shut down and everything, and I work at the airport, and we do security, and I was like, I wish they would. I wish they would. I'm gonna let some water go through. I don't even give a fuck. Look at what, you know what, ma'am? Go ahead, bring all that water through. I don't even care. I don't even care, because they ain't paying me shit. Go right on here. What's that? You got a gun? I mean, that's just unethical, but I mean, fuck it, they ain't paying me anyway. They ain't paying me shit. I don't even, I don't care. Just go ahead, just go ahead. Put all this shit through. I was mad as a bitch. Every single one of those TSOs were bitter as hell. Just like, I wish they would. Wish they would not pay me. Bet y'all let that water go through in there and figure no clippers. Right now. Just angry. So, you know, I was um, thinking, I'm mixed with black and white. A lot of people think I'm Hispanic. And I'm not. Don't let the curly hair fool you. It's just the genes. But, um, you know, I was, in, um, I was thinking the other day, and just because this is what I, you know, I do think. But um, 92.1, you guys know that, that station? Okay. 90 versus 94.5. And I'm sitting here listening to it, and I hate commercials anyways. But I'm like, when I'm listening to 92.1, it's just angry. It's just yelling. I'm like, why don't you come on down here? We got BCU. Stop the yard and all that. We got you come on down here. You can come down to 534. You can bring those clothes and you can come in the half off. <laughs> I feel bullets of hate coming through my speakers. Like, sir, why are you yelling? You have a microphone at your mouth, first of all. There is no need. I don't even understand what the fuck you're talking about. 94.5. Yes, come on down to off the hookah. Just go ahead and bring your school IDs and you can get half off. Richmond Spiders, come on in and bring your school IDs and you get free hookah all night. It's so pleasing. So, so less stressful. I'm like, aw, oh, I want to go there. Not 534. And if you've been to 534 or you've been driven by it, <laughs> enough said. So on that note, 534 music. Waka Flocka what? <laughs> Look my, no hands. Every single song these days has instructions. <laughs> it's just too much. I'm like, you know, I'm gonna do that now. What? <laughs> do your two step. <laughs> Walk it out. I'm like, God, I'm sweating my shit out. I came here, my, I had my hair all straightened out and it walked out. I just came from five, three, four earlier. 
that's why this shit look like this. I was like, nice and straight and pretty, look like white girl hair. I was trying to walk it too damn hard. I was like, I'm like, I'm not too stepping. What? Uh, I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. <sighs> we got a stretching line. Are you in line for five before? Like, I know I'm about to get it on tonight. <laughs> Limber up. But yeah, hold on. So my grandmother, bless her heart, we call her Madea. You know, it's a lot of southern names and stuff like that for, um, for grandmother. I'm from Texas. And we had a lot of cousins. And out of all my cousins, I had the easiest name, Stephanie. You got, you know, just other names that are just nobody can say. You know what I mean? Of course. I'm not even going to go there because they're on my Facebook. <laughs> If this goes on there, they're gonna be like, what you gotta say? What you gotta say, Saturday? Like, I ain't say shit about you. But, um, yeah, so, out of everybody's names you couldn't say, my name was the easiest, but the only thing that she could ever say was, hey, girl. Hey, girl, come here. Hey, uh, uh, leave the child. Girl, girl, you know your name. Come here. Come here. What the fuck is she talking to? My brother's name is Cody. C-O-D-Y. She called him Corey. That poor child, for the long, he was like, fuck it, I'll just come to it anyways, I ain't got time for this shit. You gonna sit here all day, it's hot. But she, um, she was very resourceful. So um, during Christmas time, she would get me and my um, other three girl cousins one Christmas present apiece. She would distribute it evenly. And what I mean as a piece, she would get one pack of underwear. <laughs> She's like, you get Princess Jasmine, you get Ariel, you get Cinderella. I don't even know who this bitch is. I'm like, I'm on Jasmine, because I look more like her anyway. I was like, damn, Grandma, for real. She was just, I mean, I love her to death. I understand what she was doing. She wouldn't even buy us stuff for Christmas cards. She'd get one and just tell us to read it. <laughs> Pass it around. Don't be greedy. But, um, yeah, hold on. I only got a little bit more time. A little bit more time. <sighs> Bring back the good one, because it happened again the other day. Guys hitting on me in bars. Every time. At Buffalo Wild Wings. Once again. Every fucking time. And it sticks with you. So here it goes. Sitting there with my homegirls. Sitting there eating my chicken. Here they go looking at you. Come. Walk over there. <laughs> so what's up? How you doing? So you know, I seen you over here. You was, you know, looking kind of cute. You know what I'm saying? So fine stuff. You know what I mean? And uh, so I was thinking, I just come over here. My name Dorella. That's my boy over there. That's Terry. That's my nigga. So you know what I'm saying? We just seen you over here. You doing your thing? What you eating over there? What's that Asian thing? Spicy, I bet just like you, huh? Boo caliente. Um, I'm mixed with black and white. Oh, you know what I'm saying? That's all right. That's all right. You look Hispanic. It's all good, though. Anyway, anyway, so uh, we was just wondering if you wanted to come back to my place, you know what I'm saying? Get a little drinky drink on it. Sir, stop it. Stop it. Don't you dare come up to me grabbing your shit, rubbing your belly, doing this, because I don't know if you're trying to eat me or my chicken. <laughs> Either way, that shit ain't gonna go down. How would you like it if I walked up to you and I was like, Hey, Diddy, how you doing? My name is Stephanie, but you can call me Steph. S to the E to the P to the H. I was just over here, I was looking at you, looking at him, and I was just like, Oh, what's he over there? So I just had to come up over here. That's my old girl over there. That's my friend, Danielle. And we just thought that was damn cute. You know what I'm saying? So what's up? What you trying to do? <laughs> no, because if I came up to you doing that, you're going to be like, what is this bitch got? <laughs> you grabbing on her shit and on her titties. I'm like, oh, man, I need you to exit to stage left. I don't want no part of that. Anyways, that's my time. Thank you, guys. Give up and leave the child. Yes.
see where she was rubbing her crotch. <laughs> but everybody else just kind of forget about what she was talking about. Just go, oh, yeah, that's the funniest shit. Yeah, yeah. 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 Anyway. She was talking about, uh, about uh, hip-hop music. And uh, quick question. You've heard the song Six Foot, Seven Foot. I'm yes. assuming. Okay, right. Here's the thing. Uh, young Money, Cash Money, I'm right behind you. Real G's move in silence like lasagna. <laughs> what fucking Italian restaurant do you go to where the lasagna is moving? <laughs> That's why I never did that. Anyway, glad I could bring it down to a screeching call. <laughs> you guys ready for your next comedian? Very, very funny guy who does clubs and colleges all over the country. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for Mr. Odyssey Michaels! Thank you, thank you, thank you all so very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, Stephanie, it was Stephanie? Stephanie Brown? Yes. Nice, you guys give it up for Stephanie Brown once again. Very funny lady. Just checking it out. I was in an airport a couple weeks ago and I saw this dude who was a hipster. I'm not a hipster, but was, he was a hipster. Patrick, what's up, man? I haven't seen you in a while. He looks all rat haggard and shit. He's got a beard. I'm not used to normally clean shaven. Anyway, I saw this dude and uh, he was a hipster dude and his, his, uh, his pants were tighter than hers were. And I was like, dude, you are going to get a yeast infection, no doubt. Because those pants are entirely too tight. I, uh, I saw uh, a little while ago, I saw a, uh, a pregnant midget. Let me tell you something. If you've never seen a pregnant midget, it is hilarious. Because uh, you look just like a, a regular midget, except like with like, a, like this bowling ball area thing right here. She was like that high off the ground, like her, her uterus area. And uh, she kind of looked like a, like a Dyson rollerball vacuum. You guys see that thing? Like she was floating on her soon to be born midget child. Don't get mad at me, midgets have midgets, that's what they do, all right? I don't have a problem with midgets, there's nothing wrong with them. I just think, honestly, like, I think it would be easier to tell somebody, like, if you're in a relationship, I think it would be easier to tell somebody that you had an STD rather than having to tell them that midgets ran in your family. <laughs> because, Probably not. Because women... <laughs> Women can forgive a lot of stuff, but once you start fucking up their future plans of kids and stuff, you're like, oh, okay, well, I can deal with this, this venereal disease because it's just me and you. But, like, you think about a, a midget kid coming out, and you're like, I don't think I can do this. Something's wrong. They're not going to do it. Anyway, I'm moving on. <laughs> I uh, haven't done this in a while, I'm gonna do this. I was in West Virginia like eight years ago, but for the purposes of this joke and time constraints, I'm gonna say it was last week. I was in West Virginia last week, and I did a show, which I didn't do. But after the show, which never happened, this guy asked me if I wanted to go hunting with him. But have I mentioned that none of this happened recently? Or ever? I was like, uh, dude, I appreciate the offer to go uh, hunting with you, but it's, uh, no, I don't think so. Not to got, I have a problem with hunting, it's just uh, I'm not going out woods with, uh, you know, Maynard and Ezekiel. Because people get high in the woods when they go hunting, that's what they do. I don't know if you guys have been hunting, but it's not like what they show on TV. You know, they would show the dude with the mask on, up in the tree stand, waiting patiently for a deer talking to the camera in a whisper. All right, we saw some deer come up here last week came up over the hill. We're just gonna wait for him to come. We're gonna be very patient. And uh, we're sure Big Buck is gonna come by because we've laid out apples and sugar cubes and all kinds of other things. We're just gonna wait here patiently. Six hours later, we haven't seen anything. <laughs> but we're still gonna wait patiently. It's not how it happens in real life, people. You ever been hunting with these fuckers who only have two weeks off of work? 
They've been planning a whole year to go hunting. No, mm -mm. they go out in the mornings and they're patient for like an hour and a half. You know why? Because they're high as shit. <laughs> go out in the woods, they light up like, the deer won't notice this. <laughs> <laughs> you let some dude hunting in, uh, in Hanover not see a deer for three hours. I guarantee you that he's gonna put some buckshot through a squirrel. <laughs> he's not gonna wait for a fucking <laughs> buck to go by. <laughs> anyway, this guy asked me if I wanted to go hunting with him last week, eight years ago, in West Virginia. It was actually in Maryland. <laughs> But I'm like, nah, dude, I don't want to go hunting. Because uh, these dudes do with this thing, this thing called um, um, sound shooting, all right? Yeah, it's sound shooting. It's where you, where you get so frustrated, you don't actually see what it is you're shooting. You hear a noise, you point your gun at that noise, and you shoot until whatever's making that noise stops making that noise, right? Not just that when I be out in the woods with Bubba and Maynard. 11 o'clock in the morning, they're pissed off. <laughs> Hey man, come here, I done shot the fuck out of something, man. I swear to God, listen, I don't know what it was. It sounded like a rabbit. <laughs> Walked on over two of those biggest goddamn rabbits you've seen before in all your life. Had to be a good two or three hundred pounds. <laughs> Look just like a nigger. <laughs> just like a nigger. <laughs> man, he's a caribou. <laughs> we got them up here in West Virginia slash Maryland. <laughs> Flash last week, flash eight years ago. I haven't seen caribou up here before. No, that ain't caribou. You know what? That's definitely chicken boo. Look at here. <laughs> Here's what's happening out in the woods in this joke eight years ago, last week. You are wondering when the joke's gonna end. Here's the thing, so am I. I think we should all decide right now. But this goddamn bit is over. <laughs> what say you? What the fuck I thought? Good night. Honestly, <laughs> <laughs> Michael. Blue Moon Comedy, that's right. We'll see him again in three years, that's right. <laughs> 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 uh, are you leaving? Oh, you're not getting out of here like that easy. Where are you going? Home. Why? Home. Why don't you stay in the end? Get some dick in your bed. <laughs> you're getting some dick and going to bed? Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Kelly Anderson. <laughs> and speaking of getting dick, ladies and gentlemen, 